Hi folks, John with the Wingman 115 channel. Thanks for checking in. I want to take a moment to thank Chris from Prepared Mind 101 for allowing me to come on his channel. Today I'm going to be talking about air gun basics. A lot of folks have questions on air guns. Uh, what to choose? What do I purchase? How much money do I spend? We're going to try to cover some of those questions here in this video. Come along and join me. The first two questions I ask folks is, what is your intended use for the air gun? The second question is, how much money do you want to spend? Now generally, these air guns range in price from anywhere from $50 all the way up into the thousands of dollars, depending on what you want to get. Now, there's four different categories that I usually break down air guns in. And it kind of narrows it down to what folks would like to do. First off, do you want to use it for hunting? A lot of folks like coming out like I do out here in the woods and uh, pursuing small game. Second one would be, do you want to do it for target shooting? Do you backyard plank? Do you have young kids or a wife and you like coming out and be able to go camping and shoot a can around? Second one being pest control. A lot of folks don't like to either target shoot or hunt, but they have a problem with something coming into their chicken coop or something getting in their trash barrel and they just want to be able to dispatch that uh, pesky varmint that keeps coming to their house. The fourth would be competition shooting. Now a lot of competitive shooting ranges in between the 10 meter and the 25 meter range. A lot of that is done with uh, air rifles, some air pistols. Generally that's in the 177 caliber uh, the reason being is they get the velocities a little bit lower and they're trying to shoot real tight hole punching groups. So there's four different categories to think about on what you would like to do to make a better decision in air gun shooting. The next four considerations that I ask folks is what platform would you like to purchase? And what I mean platform is, is that it's either a pneumatic pumper a CO2, uh, a Springer, or a precharged pneumatic like this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut away, I'm going to show some video and some photos of some different models of the guns as I describe the platforms to help you get a better idea on what you would like to use. First off, let's talk about the pneumatic pump. Now I purchased a couple of them and I've showcased them on my channel the Crossman 1377 and the Crossman 1322. Benjamin also makes some rifles uh, that are pneumatic pumpers. They're a great platform and it's great when you're starting out. Uh, a lot of folks, I was teaching my daughter how to shoot and I had a range set up inside my garage. So I didn't want a lot of velocity. So I would only pump up the uh, pneumatic pistol one or two times, three tops, and let her shoot in the garage. The velocity's low, I don't have to worry about the pellet going through the trap, going through a wall. Very safe, very safe for backyard friendly shooting as well, where that may be a consideration. Now, as far as target shooting all day, you might get a little tired pumping up a pneumatic pump. Uh, for me, I like going out plinking around with them a little bit. I use mine for hunting, small game. They're getting up in the velocities where they'll take ground squirrels, they'll take crows, uh, even cottontail rabbits. So that may be a consideration for you. The second platform I wanna talk about is CO2. Now CO2 comes in a couple different sizes. There's the 12 gram cartridge that you can buy there's an 88 gram that they kind of get a little uh, expensive. And then folks like me who, if you shoot a lot, I did a nine ounce paintball tank conversion kit to one of my rifles. And I'll show it here. That's the RWS Hammerly 850. Great shooting rifle. Check out that review. Now, CO2 is very temperature regulated. Here where I live in a warmer climate down in Southern California, where temperatures can get up in the high 80s, 90s, and above, 
great platform for CO2. If you're in a climate zone where temps tend to range 65 and below, then the velocities start to diminish on CO2. So that may be a consideration to think about. CO2s are fun, they're very consistent shooters, and when they're on, they're shooting great. So don't rule out CO2, it's just very temperature regulated, and it depends on your uh, locale. The next one I would like to talk about is the Springer, or the gas spring. Now, Crossman tends to call it their nitro technology. I own one or two with that technology. Uh, I'll showcase here uh, one of them. And the Springers are a great platform. One, they're not temperature regulated. But you have to kind of hold a Springer different than you would hold a traditional rifle because you're getting a lot of recoil. There's a lot of energy on that coiled up spring. And once you release it, it's going to jump a little bit. So you're going to have to hold it kind of in an artillery hold like this because as soon as you fire off the uh, air gun it's going to jump a little bit and come right back so it takes a little practice in shooting those now the gas spring is a little bit more friendlier in that regard so those are considerations to think about one thing also with a springer is you can't just leave it cocked and locked and leave it that way for a very long long time it's just not good for the spring. You're putting too much preload on that. On the other hand, with the gas spring, you could leave it cocked and hunt all day and not worry about it. Uh, it's basically the same technology that's used in the uh, actuators for like raising up your car hatchback in the back of your car. And they're in the compressed position for most of their lifetime in a car. So that technology is catching on the velocities are starting to get higher and those are just things to think about affordability those rifles tend to be in a in an average range next we're going to talk about the pre-charged pneumatic guns a lot of them are very lightweight this one happens to be the benjamin marauder air pistol in a carbine uh, has an air tube on the bottom has your psi regulator there tell how much to fill it. Uh, this one's filled in the front with a little quick disconnect and it needs to be filled with either a hand pump or some sort of tank that has a higher pressure than this. Now with these they're very consistent shooters. They're fun but there's also the added cost of either having to buy a pump or having to buy some sort of tank to be able to refill this. So that's another consideration to think about. One thing is though, they're very accurate. And generally you can get anywhere from 20 to 40 good shots out of, on average, most of the air guns that are uh, pre-charged pneumatic. A lot of folks use them for hunting. They're great hunting rifles. Uh, they make them in the 25 caliber all the way up to a 50 caliber. So there's a lot of choices to choose from in this platform. Now, a lot of folks ask me, John, why do you even get into air gun shooting at all with some of the cost of these air guns equal to or greater than actual firearms? And my answer to them is, is that one, they're really fun to do. Uh, two, most of them are backyard friendly. I don't have to drive away to a gun range. Uh, three, I don't need a big reloading press and all the bells and whistles that go with that if I'm going to be shooting hundreds or thousands of rounds. Uh, generally, cost savings, once I get over the initial purchase of buying the air gun, usually it's just the pellets and say a tin of the Crossman Premier hollow point pellets at Walmart are generally about $9 for 500 rounds. You try to get 500 rounds of nine millimeter and see how much that costs are now 500 rounds of 22 rimfire. It's the, sometimes, if you can even find it, is in the 80 or $90 range or more. So with ammo being in short supply and shooting is a perishable skill, this is a great way to maintain your skill, learn how to shoot, learn the fundamentals of safe shooting, 
and then as you progress into firearms or if you're a firearm owner and you're trying to stay sharp with your shooting skills it's just a fun quick easy inexpensive way to do that and it's a great time out with the family and friends so all around it's a win for air gun shooting folks i hope the information that i shared with you today will give you a better understanding and allow you to make a better informed decision on your next air gun purchase i'd like to take this opportunity to thank chris again from prepared mind 101 for allowing me to come on his channel this is john with the wingman 115 channel signing out take care folks i'll see you on the next one